boffins. Don't call us boffins. So the Institute of Physics has asked tabloid newspapers here in the UK, in the Daily Star, the Sun, Daily Mirror, Daily Mail, to stop using the term boffin. Some of you may have heard this term before. Some of you on the other side of the pond may not be familiar with the term boffin, but it's, well, the Institute of Physics would say it's a disparaging term for, for scientists. It's like the typical egghead, uh, sort of typical science fiction movie, you know, white coat, goggles, uh, hair, a bit fluffier on the sides than mine, but certainly the, the, the slap head bit in the middle, um, sets in mind a certain stereotype about scientists. It's an expression from the Second World War. And um, I think maybe Winston Churchill saying that boffin should be on tap, not on top. But it doesn't worry me very much. A new escape technique developed by Royal Naval Boffins back in Britain. What seems to be much more important is newspapers should be talking about scientists rather than worrying what they call them. Among the boffins in the back room, even more remarkable results seem to have been obtained. I can give you one particular wonderful example, personal example from 1996. This is um, from the Nottingham Even Evening Post. Uh, this was my research supervisor, Peter Beaton, at the time. That's me, slightly less grey, slightly more hair, looking down a uh, microscope into an ultra-high vacuum chamber. And as you can see, tiny disease buster is city boffin's dream. I'm not, like, personally aff deeply offended, but I don't like it still. It feels like it's partly saying that scientists are a different breed, which I don't like either. No, I mean, I don't have time to have feelings about scientists called <laughs> I think like we, we owned the word nerd, I think we can own the word boffin as well. Some would claim it's a term of endearment, and certainly the tabloids would claim that it's a ter term of endearment. The Institute of Physics, on the other hand, thinks it just disparages us, it puts in mind all those different stereotypes and it turns off younger generations who want to get into science because they have a particular role model. When you hear that word boffin, you have a particular person or type of person in mind and they want to get rid of it. And it's led to this huge war, war of words um, between the tabloids in the UK and between the Institute of Physics. The Institute of Physics obviously set off this campaign. The, um, the tabloids would have nothing, wanted to have nothing to do with it, apart from the Daily Mirror. To be fair to the Daily Mirror, it said, yeah, we'll hold our hands up, we'll try not to use it again. The Star, whose front page most days over the last year or so seems to be focused on visits from extraterrestrials. The star is a bit like the US National Enquirer, but has slipped down it's a few steps below where the National Enquirer used to be. You know, evidence of World War II bomber found on moon, that type of thing. Eggheads want term boffin banned as they announce bin the boffin campaign. A common phrase used to describe scientists as being protested by the people it refers to with a campaign from members of the Institute of Physics seeking to knock it on the head once and for all. And then <laughs> response, from the tabloid was sign our petition, save our bottom, sorry, save our boffins, not bottoms, save our boffins. I'll read it out. I, the undersigned, do solemnly swear that I will continue to use the word boffins as it shows how much I love our scientists because they are dead good at experiments and talking about things that no one else understands and the world would be a perver place without the weirdos. So they wanted to, they wanted to keep the term. They want to keep the term and in fact they're kicking back heavily and they're not going to stop using it. But you can see without the weirdos, it's frustrating because from one perspective it's like why are we worried about this, it doesn't really matter. But from another perspective, sort of words are everything. They do set preconceptions, they do define certain environments, they do control and tune and sort of I guess direct how people think of things. And so Changing the words does change perception, I would say. And particularly when you get this a perver place without the weirdos. You know, that's, we're not going to attract teenagers into science if the tabloids are essentially equating scientist with weirdo. I get where they're coming from. I just have bigger things to worry about in terms of the culture. <laughs> <laughs> within science than what we're being we're being called much worse by other people and you know as women we are, we are being judged in much worse ways than being called boffins so that's kind of where my my concentration lies <laughs> i used to be a newspaper journalist 
and I can see the problem if you have to use the word scientists again and again and again in the one article. You kind of want other words for scientists, just just so you're not being repetitive. Yeah. What what word would you like? Like researchers is another one. Exactly. So you can use scientists, researchers. Any other acceptable words? <laughs> so experts. Experts. Yeah, and even then I might quibble with expert at times. But uh, you know, there's scientists, research e researchers, experts. Um, even if we're talking about engineers, or we can talk about particular, so medical physicist, um, biochemist, any of those types of things. So, so bring in the, the, instead of just having this catch-all, broad, universal term of scientist or worse, boffin, you know, what does that scientist do? Or how about using their names? Wouldn't that be good? We could just use their names. That takes up a lot of space. And, you, and usually there's 50 of you guys collaborating on any one project. Yeah, but and colleagues. So Dr. Smith and colleagues, Professor Smith and colleagues, whatever, something along those lines. I just kind of laugh and that's kind of, that's, that's okay because compared to Jocelyn Belbonnell, which I think it was that, that particular publication, Oxfordshire mother discovers this and then it gave, gave her body sizes, as in like, I'm making these numbers up, like 34, 27, 55. And I'm like, well, you know what, if it just says boffin, <laughs> <laughs> You're worried about the reputational harm of being described as boffins. Do you think it does any reputational harm to you guys complaining about being called boffins? It makes you seem humourless. I, I agree entirely, which is why when I read this, this sign-up edition um, from the star, you know, it, it, I find it quite funny. I, I understand what they're doing. And by bringing this to the fore, this back and forth, at least science is in the news. I agree entirely, it can make us seem humorless. And I think we have to treat this with, you know, a wry grin, and we've got to, you know, not come across as po-faced about it. And it, it is quite amusing in many ways. However, I still would say on the boffin thing, it is, it's setting, setting us up um, to be distinct from the rest of the, the, the sort of everyday people, that somehow we are a class of our own, when... But in this context, I feel like you should be set apart, because it's not John Smith from the pub who's claiming to have cured cancer, it's someone who is smarter and clever and done the research and has done a PhD and has done years and years of work. So you, you should be set apart, you should be seen as studious and separate from the rest of society because you've done something special in this context. Yes, on the weekend you might go to the pub and see but a band, it. but but you're not being spoken about in that context. It do, but they do, the boffin term does exactly the opposite of what you do, Brady. You bring this camera in, you connect with us, you humanise us. This dehumanises us without getting too poor faced about it. But that's, I think that's the point. It's a question of sort of, well, they're over there, how could we ever understand them? And moreover, in the worst cases, what that boffin term can do is sort of go, well, oh, the boffins are just, you know, they're just off in their own little world again. It's of absolutely um, no practical use. Oh, we, we, why do we need boffins? Why do we need elites? Why do we need experts? So if you have a, if you have a big discovery and it's in the, the Daily Star, you don't mind if it says Nottingham boffin has chemical breakthrough. No, I don't mind very much. I mean, the only time I've been in the local paper, I was described as YouTube professor. So whether that's a compliment or an insult, I'm not sure. <laughs> if you'd like to see more of my videos with scientists or researchers, experts, whatever you want to call them, check out more 60 symbols for physicists, deep sky videos for astronomers, chemists over at Periodic Videos, mathematicians at Numberphile, I'll put links to all my channels in the video description. Please do go and have a look, and if you like what you see, maybe subscribe. <laughs>